Let's first talk about, I'm thinking you saw an opportunity to solve a problem. Most of us are not in business unless we're solving problems. And so you must have seen an opportunity to solve a problem. And therefore you came up with this idea of pad split. So tell us the story, how you even came up with this idea and what problem does it fix? Sure. Well, I think first I want to give credit where credit is due. So my uh, co-founder or CEO, Atticus, he's also my brother-in-law. So I've known for some time. He's uh, when you call me the brainchild, I sort of chuckle because uh, you know, the credit goes to him for that. But, um, you know, he got to start in real estate. He was, he was living in Atlanta and, you know, was a commercial broker um, in 2007. So kind of pre-crash, but kind of lived through that. And, you know, he's looking around and seeing all these houses uh, for sale for, you know, really, uh, really cheap, you know, post-crash kind of 2008, 2009. So he was buying them up, building a portfolio. And like things, he kind of stumbled into it. He bought a house in Southwest Atlanta and two neighbors came by, you know, Mr. Oates and Mr. Mitch. And they said, Hey man, you know, our house is being foreclosed on. You've got this house, you know, we're renting rooms in this one. We want to rent rooms in yours. And it's like, ah, you know, I, no thanks. You know, it, I'm going to rent this out through, uh, through the housing authority, you know, appreciate it. But I, I you know, I don't, I don't really know what a rooming house is, you know, no thanks. And they're like, Hey man, we'll pay you a hundred bucks a week. And he looks at it and he thinks, you know, gosh, four bedrooms, hundred bucks a week or I get 800 from the housing authority. So we gave it a try and did another one in 2012 and kind of, you know, I built up a, a large portfolio of single family homes and apartments. And this was always kind of a, a thing in the background, but over the intervening years, what he noticed was much more profitable and they serve a need that is really hard for other housing providers to serve. You know, what's that for that income demographic that's, you know, people who are working, people working full time, but can't really afford market rents. You know, and the way to think about it for for uh, you know investors on on the on the podcast are, you know, typically as a landlord, you want, you know, you're asking for three times income as, as rent, you know, or three times rent as income. And you know, you think about it, someone's making twenty five thousand dollars a year. You know, if they're making twenty dollars an hour, you know, what are they qualifying for? You know, a couple hundred bucks a month, six hundred bucks a month there are no apartments available for $600 a month. And that's before you get into security deposit and utilities to turn on or deposits to turn on utilities. And, you know, realistically to set up your own apartment, you know, furnish it, all that, you really need to have, you know, three or $4,000 typically in out-of-pocket expenses. And okay, for those who can do it, that's, that's just all well and good. But I, I don't think it takes a, you know, a genius to, you know, or any great insight to know that there's, millions, tens of millions of Americans who are in a position where they don't have $4,000 to their name to get set up and certainly not because if they have to pay for an apartment. So um, how do you kind of lower the barrier to entry, still maintaining high standards on underwriting, you know, collections rates, obviously that's, that's our business, but you know, how do you really kind of make it work for this, you know, not small sliver of the population, but really enormous um, unmet need uh, in the market? Got you. <clears throat> well, and that's certainly true. I mean, if, if these people aren't having a place to go rent, like you and your company are providing, uh, you know, it's like, I guess they're staying home with mama and daddy or grandmama or uncle or cousins or sisters or brothers or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a whole host of things. I mean, you figure, you know, we talk about, um, you know, imagining someone who's working full time, but is, is functionally homeless, right? You know, what does that mean? You know, maybe they drive till they qualify. You know, maybe they work in Atlanta, but they commute from an hour and a half away or two hours away because that's how far you have to go to to get a place you can afford. Or yeah, they they crash on someone's couch or sleep in their cars. You know, certainly if you uh, go to a lot of big cities, you see a lot of people who are doing that. You know, sleep at the airport, and these are people who are working. So you know, obviously, you know, people can hold down a job, they can put in the hours, and our our conviction is that. You know, we as a society and as an investor, you know, group of investors should be able to provide a product that works, 